Most things that have to do with system configuration on a Linux computer require root access and are therefore not available to normal cluster users. However, there are some things you can adjust, and those are mostly things that make it easier to use the console. So let's look at a few things you can do. First of all, I've already mentioned that files that are in PROC contain system information. I haven't gone into much detail beyond that, but now that we know the cat and other text editor commands, I can give you a brief demonstration. The cut command will simply display it like any other text file. And in the case of the CPU info command, the information is listed for each individual core. You can see this cluster has 12 cores per node, and they're listed in order from 0 through 11. Along with information like what it is, what the technical specifications are, are listed in this file. And more importantly, they can be used, for example, if you have a program that needs this information. That program can, for example, call up that text file and maybe read the information from there. Don't worry about accidentally deleting one of the files in PROC. That's not possible. One thing you can do that makes using the console more convenient is define an alias. The idea behind an alias is if you have a long command that has to be typed often, Maybe it has a lot of options that are always the same. Instead of typing that command every single time, you could, of course, put it in a script, as we've seen before, and then simply call that script. But you have another simpler option, and that's defining an alias. Defining an alias is a pretty simple command. It's just alias, name, and then the command what you want it to be. Again, the same rules about quotes that we looked at before apply. You can use the alias command with no arguments to list all the aliases that are defined. We've already seen two very commonly used aliases in this course. One is ll for ls minus l, and one is cd dot dot for cd dot dot with a space in between. Both of those, like I said before, are usually defined for you by Linux. If you happen to have a Linux distribution that does not have that, you can add them manually. You define an alias by simply typing the command in the console. The alias will persist until you disconnect from the cluster. However, there is a way to make this permanent and in fact to make settings in general permanent. What I've just mentioned with the alias command that really applies to most console settings. Namely, you can type them in the console and then they are set that way. But the moment you close that console or the moment you shut down the computer or the moment you shut down the connection to the cluster, it disappears. We've already seen, for example, if you add something to the path, same principle or any environment variable, same principle. The moment the console closes, the environment variable is gone. If you want that to be available after the computer restarts, you have to put it into a configuration file. These configuration files are console-specific files that sit in your home directory and contain settings that get executed every time an instance of the console is started. For example, you open a bash console, which is the one I've been using for now, and depending on your Linux distribution, there's a file that's either called .bashrc, it's a hidden file because it starts with dot, or bash underscore profile. And the moment that bash console gets executed, it looks in your home directory for one of these files and executes all the commands that are in there. And since that happens every time a console is started, these settings are always available to you the moment the console is opened. If you are not using bash, most other shells have a similar system. In fact, even programs that are not console sometimes have this. For example, the Vim text editor has its own RC file and whatever settings you want to make permanent, you can put into that RC file. When you edit these files, you have to be very, very careful. Since that file gets executed every time you open it, if you have a bug in that code that gets executed, the console might not open. In the extreme case, it might become impossible to log into the computer and you have to contact an admin. You can apply the settings that you made in one of these RC files by typing the name source and then the file name then the file gets executed and everything that gets set in there will be available, aliases, whatever. 
That's also a useful thing for testing these things. You type source and your file name. You make sure that your changes that you made are correct. I always recommend making a temporary file where you test any changes, then you source that. If it breaks, simply log out and back in and it's gone. And only when you are sure your changes are correct, you can put that into the actual bash RC. Another thing I want to mention is locales. A locale is what Linux uses to determine some language specific settings for you. For example, what language your console displays error messages in and what keyboard settings you're using. Those settings are grouped and you can display them with the locale command. And if you ever want to change them manually, you can do that with the locale command as well. Something that occasionally happens is you might get weird errors about keyboard schemes or the wrong keys, or maybe you get a problem with decimal points versus decimal commas, like it's used in German. In that case, there might be something wrong with your locale. Here is an example for a locale. Each line is a different setting. And you can see that in my case, most of these are set to DE for German. One of these is the actual language and one of these is the region. For example, Austria might have DE as the language, but not DE as the region. Also, the UTF-8 refers to character encoding. I won't go into that, but it basically has to do with text files. The line at the top is called lang. And that's the setting that always gets used when there's no specific setting for something. For example, the time has a specific setting that displays, for example, if the month comes before the day or the other way around. And if that is not set, then lang is used. Or if there's something that is not covered by time, then lang is used. The LC all is one that's not set by default. That's something you can use to override all the others. I recommend it's only for testing purposes. All in all, you won't have to worry much about the locale, but occasionally something might break, so it's useful for a normal user to know the kind of basics behind this.